Hey, I'm Creech and this is Creech and Cars. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about the BMW Vision New Class concept that outlined the next era of BMW. So today, I'll bring you an early look at what will be one of the first new class vehicles in BMW's lineup, the M3. This is the best place for BMW to start implementing the new class design language and philosophy as the M3 is now the quintessential BMW and perhaps the greatest sports sedan nameplate ever. Of course, this transition to the new class also means a transition to fully electric power, which a lot of people might not be happy about, but before you make your final judgment on the NKM3, I'll give you all of the information we have so far about the potential exterior and interior design, as well as the mechanical and performance specs. So let's first take a look at the potential exterior of the new M3 in these artist renderings based on the Vision New Class concept. Overall, as you can see, it should very much resemble the compact and angular design of the Vision New Class, but much more aggressive and of course more compliant with design and safety regulations than the concept. And I do think these renderings make the concept look much better and actually palatable. Starting with the grille design, BMW has made a lot of design mistakes over the past decade, and their modern takes on the classic kidney grille have been at the center of much of the controversy. I think on this new M3, the grille looks much better and it widens out the stance, making the approaching face very sporty and aggressive. I wasn't sure about the running lights on the concept, but in this application, I actually think they look great. The black accented bumper matches the concept, except for a vent at the bottom for more airflow, and there are side air curtains to help cool the brakes down. The doors continue with the very angular and geometric design while adding more black accenting and an M3 badge. The window trim and roof should also be blacked out and these renderings show a similar rim design to what BMW has been doing on the current M3. It's a very complex design and I would actually expect the production model to have something a little more aerodynamic. The new M3 may also feature some more venting on the side to help cool the rear brakes. Here's a look at the potential rear quarter from car scoops. I think the other ones are closer to what the production version will look like, but I like the rear light design here that incorporates the split light bar seen on the concept and adds some of the same cues found in the current BMW taillight design. The rear bumper looks decent and I like how this design uses some of the electric blue color because I'm sure BMW will sprinkle it throughout much of the new class cars. And here's a brief look at the interior of the new class for those who haven't seen it yet. The concept's interior focuses on excessive minimalism and the use of sustainable materials. And I think this interior will morph into the M3 with the heavy use of Alcantara and some sportier color options like black and red. The steering wheel is already flat bottomed, so that's a plus, and aside from the large center infotainment screen, there is a screen that is projected along the bottom of the windshield, and that serves as the gauge cluster while allowing plenty of adjustability to show different amounts and types of information for the driver. We will just have to wait and see to get more details on the interior, but for now let's move on to the performance specs. So this M3 will be electric like the rest of the new class models and many BMW enthusiasts won't be happy with this decision, but I'll go more in detail on that later. For now, let's go over the specifics of the electric powertrain. The new M3 will be built on an all new platform, simply called the new class and abbreviated to NK. The NK platform itself is designed to accommodate up to four motors and one megawatt of power, which is roughly the equivalent of 1,340 horsepower. This has led to a lot of people claiming that the upcoming electric M3 will have 1,300 horsepower, and that's not necessarily true. Think about it like this, if a truck or SUV platform itself is designed to tow up to 13,000 pounds, that wouldn't always translate into a 13,000 pound towing capacity for every model on that platform and when it's put into real world use. So here, BMW is simply stating the upper limit for what a vehicle built on the NK platform could handle. There haven't been any official numbers stated just yet, but some reports are saying that BMW will start the M3 out with all four motors, however, they will only be tuned to produce around 7 to 800 horsepower. 
We also don't have any additional details on trim levels, so there could be a situation where the base electric M3 only has two motors or three motors, and then there's a competition trim that adds the fourth motor and bumps up the power output with that. And while I said only around 7 to 800 horsepower, keep in mind the current M3 makes a little over 500 horsepower with the optional V8. The base one makes about uh, 473 horsepower. So this would still be a huge boost into the next generation. But the current gas M3 also comes with a six-speed manual, and the electric one will almost certainly not have that option. We don't have any details around the NK transmission, and we don't even know if it will have multiple speeds, but I think if BMW planned on making a manual electric car, they would tout it quite loudly. But aside from that, another major concern with EV sports cars is that they lose the feeling unique to each different engine and transmission that's found with ICE cars, and BMW actually has a solution to this. Frank Weber, the chief of product development, says BMW has put the last 20 to 30 years of experience into a control unit that they are calling the heart of joy. Weber says that this unit uses completely proprietary software and specifically mentions that this is something that can't be bought by other companies and this is how BMW can continue to make the ultimate driving machine into the electric era. This control unit is supposedly what will give the new class cars the feeling of being a BMW and some sort of unique and enjoyable experience. But the only problem here is no one outside of BMW has had first-hand experience of this system. So for now, it's easy to be very skeptical of these claims. BMW has chosen the iconic nameplate to be able to boldly introduce the new class. So the all-new M3 will be one of the first NK BMWs to go on sale, if not the first model. But that still won't be until around 2026 or 27. With it being that far off, I don't think anyone could really speculate about the price in any meaningful way, especially with everything that's going on in the car market right now. So with all of that in mind, will the fully electric M3 mark the beginning of a successful transition into this new era? This decision has been met with some controversy already, but BMW fans have had to have known that this would happen at some point. Still, BMW had a preemptive response ready. Frank Weber says the data clearly shows as power goes up, market share increases, and with regulations tightening down on ICE cars, electric motors provide a way to continue to increase power output going forward. Weber said he does expect electrification to turn away some customers at first, but BMW's research has shown that 90-95% to of M car buyers want the best performance possible and don't care about what powertrain accomplishes that. Even though BMW is displaying confidence, the gas M3 should remain on the market for the rest of the 2020s, meaning it will be sold alongside the electric one for a period of time at the end of the decade. I think BMW is doing this to not fully turn away customers who prefer ICE M3s while giving them some time to become more familiar with the NK M3s. For example, Someone who's going to buy a new gas M3 could be given the opportunity to sit in or drive an electric one and maybe feel like it's not so bad. I think this is the best possible way to go about this transition and if BMW can deliver on the promises of the Heart of Joy control unit, then the M3 is set up to continue to be the standard for sports sedans into the next generation. So that's everything we know so far about the upcoming fully electric new class M3. What do you think about the decision to electrify the M3? Do you think BMW should have let the nameplate retire with a gas model and create something new for the electric era? Instead, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. On this channel, I talk about car news like this, as well as history and culture, so if you like videos like this, be sure to check out the rest of the channel and subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.